it's otaku. Yeah, the, the only crazy, like, outgoing, passionate uh, characters off the top of my head are, like, Takaru and uh, Ayame, your older brother, who, who Yuki despises for being so passionate and outgoing. <laughs> uh, but, um... But yeah, there's nothing, there's, between me and Yuki, there's nothing. He's quiet, I'm loud, he, he has fake smiles, I smile all the time. <laughs> well, do you like cheese? I do like cheese. There we go, we found some common ground. <laughs> there you go. So, Alex, oh, are you a fan, are you a fan of rats? <laughs> um, I do find them to be, to be cute when I go into a pet store. Okay. Okay, yeah, you know, I do have similarities then. Yay! Like rats, that's good. <laughs> yes, Toru's turn. Oh, my turn. Um, how am I most like Toru? Um, I'm a little naive. I've been told several times. Um, well, I'm mostly not like Toru, actually. Like, I mean, I'm kind of ac- outgoing and friendly, and I make friends really easily, kind of like Toru. But I'm also exceptionally. I, I can be really. Are we allowed to swear? Yes. <laughs> Okay, I can be exceptionally bitchy if you piss me off. <laughs> also, I swear like a sailor. So, uh, Never would have guessed. Yeah, if you if you if you hear my outtakes, uh, you just hear me just going, God damn it! Go. Oh, oh, okay, all right, all right, all right. Oh, crud! I'll screw up my line and swear. But, I, en- um, I envy you that you have outtakes because the program I use to send in my lines only has a fifty only has a fifty megabyte limit, so I don't have room for outtakes. I have to re-record everything. Oh, I just send in the page, just full page of whatever lines I have, and then I, if I screw up, I just keep going because that's what I'm used to as an actor. Is if you screw up your line, you just kind of just keep going or you start over. So I'm. Unless, like, it, it's something where, I don't know, the microphone's screwed up and it's, like, really, really bad, and then I'll turn it off. But otherwise, I just keep going. Evan claimed to not have any bloopers, necessarily. But, I, um, I, I, wa- I would like to have bloopers, but like I said, the program that I use to send files only has a 50 megabyte limit. That's just barely enough for just the lines. Well, I was going to say, um, you you do have them. You just <laughs> They sneak out every once in a while. It's, 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 um, I do? Yes, it, it, keeping with the whole... Uh, I just have to share this one because it, it's fresh on my mind after doing episode four. Um, uh, at the time of recording this, I'm getting ready to mix episode five. Just got done with four. And uh, they sneak in in a very Shigure-like way where this, there's a line for Yuki takes Toru to the garden. And he's like, he's like, yep, this is my secret base. He's like, this is my love shack, baby. And he goes into this, like, <laughs> this very shaft-like thing. <laughs> yeah. It's, you have them. They just sneak in. So he's like, uh, this, like, very yuki as shaft thing for half a second. And then he's all serious again, continues with the scene, and I'm, like, listening and taking notes. I'm like, what the fuck was that? <laughs> <laughs> That's going in the real. <laughs> um, as for most, unlike, I guess I'd have to say that I'm much more selfish and um, self-absorbed, I guess, than Toru. Like, Toru is the kindest, most adorable person <laughs> And I'm not, so... Aw, I think you <laughs> Well, I can be, but it's usually to achieve my own means. <laughs> <laughs> just saying. <laughs> Yay. We're, just, we're bearing our souls here on, here on the internet. That's all right, that's all right. I'm just telling my soul to the internet. Yay! <laughs> Yay. <laughs> There's no trolls on the internet, no. <sighs> we're all welcoming, kind-hearted, <laughs> soft and fluffy souls. Like the commenters on the videos. <laughs> oh, sweet Jesus, yeah. Um... <laughs> Okay, so uh, what was the biggest challenge you faced uh, voice acting your character or just voice acting in general? Um, Because I know both of you have acting backgrounds, but um, obviously it's kind of different when you get to just having to use your voice to portray emotion or whatever. Uh, Do you want me to go first or do you want to go, Evan? Uh, You you guys can have a thumb more. It doesn't matter. Okay. Um, Well, I kind of have some experience with voice acting, sort of. Um, at my school, we did something called stage readings, where you're just sitting in a chair, and all you're really using is your face and your voice. Mm-hmm. You're not really using your body. So I kind of had a, I, I've done a lot of work with that before, but for this, I think the biggest challenge that I faced doing Toru, particularly if she's like laughing about something, is trying to sound sincere and not fake. Like, trying to portray that emotion in a way that you can tell that you're not just faking it, especially when you can't see them and you're only hearing them. And since Toru's voice is very similar to my natural voice, there's kind of a a slight perk when I do 
Toru's voice, if you ever listen to an operator, they've kind of got that, hi, how's it going? Like that little slightly higher voice. I try to keep it to my range. So I think that's probably the most difficult thing with Toru. Not sounding like Laura Bailey. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was a, that was a big trick. I was going to say, now that I was... Didn't realize that I sounded like her until someone commented on it, I think, or someone said, hey, you sound like Laura Bailey. And I'm like, really? Because I, ha- I refused to watch the anime once I got the role because I didn't want to sound like her. Mm-hmm. So all of a sudden I kept getting comments like, oh, she sounds like Laura Bailey. Oh, she sounds like, like, but I wasn't trying to. No. <laughs> yeah. God. Yeah, that was that was tricky. I think that that was part of the callback, and that was part of the initial thing is, is getting you away from sounding like her because yeah, your natural speaking voice, just even talking to me right now, kind of sounds a good deal like her. And it was, um, it, again, it was good for the part just because uh, she 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 was pretty perfect for the part too. But you know, I didn't want it to sound like we were copying that. I wanted wanted to be just more like it's a coincidence, but you know, the style is different here. So mm-hmm. yeah, that was tricky. But I think thankfully we're we're pretty far from that now. So. Yay. <laughs> uh, well, for me, Your turn, Yuki. Uh, I, I hate to say that. I mean, I don't want to sound like I'm one-upping you or anything, but I kind of. Oh, no, don't worry. I saw. I at first had a lot of problems voicing Yuki. I mean, first off, I first. I first off before. Oh, I got an email. Um, when I first when I first got the part of Yuki, the first thing I did was actually go on YouTube. And I just went to a random clip of an episode just so I could hear Yuki's voice. And I think it's uh, Steve Staley who voices Yuki. Eric Vale. Mm-hmm. Eric Vale. Steve Staley is um, in L.A., I think. So it's a, it's a Texas dub. But they do have similar voices. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Eric Vale. Sorry, but... diehard fan. <laughs> 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 no, oh Eric my God. Sorry. Oh, my God. Yuki's voiced you. by Trunks. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I think uh, Yuki is the kindest and friendliest that Eric Vale has ever sounded. <laughs> he keeps getting cast as uh, these total douche nozzle ca- kind of he's, characters. He's America. <laughs> he's America. Douche nozzle. Who was it? So anyway, I, I hear Eric Vale's voice, and my very first instinct is mimic it. Ah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I, yeah. I will admit that's the first place I went. Now I I did like high school theater and musicals and stuff. I mean, I was never like. An actual character. I was always in the ensemble. I would always have a line here and there, blah blah blah. blah. So I wouldn't say I had as much practice as I could get. Mm-hmm. I mean, but mm-hmm. then, like, like a year and a half ago, I actually had a voiceover class. I'm in college right now, and I had a voiceover class, and that was the best class ever. <laughs> uh, so, um, yeah. All that aside, I try to do the character. The first part is I hear Yuki's voice, and you just look at him, and I just, and you know this a little too well. Yezu, but I just look at the character and I just feel like he need, he needs a very flowery voice like this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I and, oh, we have a history with that voice. Yes, that yeah. I, as I say, I'll let you talk more before I cover that end of things. But Yuki is not the same. Your Yuki is not the same Yuki that we started out with at all. <laughs> I know, and I I well, things get better as you go on. It's like an abridged series. Yeah. The yeah. jokes get better. <laughs> So yeah, as as time went on, Yuki became a little more, a little less flowery and a little more, for lack of a better word, normal sounding. Where he's just talking and he's not using. How can I say that he's not pulling a tamaki? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. I think that's the best way to put it. Um. And yeah, and yeah, just, it just kind of is going off from there. I mean, I'm I'm less being, I'm less being Yuki and I'm just being more normal, as a, is a way I could put it. Yeah, essentially what what we started out with was um, when we first meet Yuki, uh, that flower, the more Tamaki thing is is a little bit more obvious uh, because we don't know who he is yet and Toru doesn't know who he is yet and he needs to come across as this big, mysterious, very princely figure. And so that was okay at first, but I kept pulling you away from... I didn't actually didn't know that you were imitating Eric Bell. I was I wasn't aware if you'd ever seen that before. Um, but I knew that you were doing the quiet, you know, lonesome prince whispery voice. And I was like, okay, don't do that. Be confident because people have heard that before. And I don't really. I, I kind of thought to myself, okay, ignoring the anime for a minute. If if I was one of those fangirls, if you know, if if I was a girl that was interested in Yuki, um, I wouldn't be attracted to the whispery thing. Like, I would be attracted to confidence to a guy with a very charismatic, louder-sounding voice. So I was, you know, that draws people in. And so um, I was like, well, you know, come off the whispery thing, just just be louder and more confident. So 
the the more and more we did that, and the more we learned about Yuki as a person, and he wasn't really this mysterious princely guy anymore. He was just a normal guy, and he would like make bad jokes to Shigure and you know roll his eyes at Kyo and stuff like that. And he was like, you can't be all flowery anymore because he just seems normal now because we've actually met him for who he is. You know, but, um, so yeah, that's kind of when Evan was frustrated at first because he's like, but but I did it this way first time, and now I'm like, well, I'm making you do it again. Sorry, mm-hmm. well, first mistress, get get cracking. Oh, so. Yeah. Um, so yeah, but it's, it's been a lot of fun, and, um, uh, Evan's doing an awesome job this time. Um, okay, so, uh, what do you enjoy most about playing your character? Do you have a favorite part you've gotten to do so far, or just an aspect of, of, um, of playing them and stuff? So, yeah. Um, Evan, you can go. Um, it's not so much a favorite moment that I had to do. I mean, if I were to, if I were to really choose something, it would be all of the funny moments, usually when Kyo is in them. <laughs> Especially in the moment where I had to force feed him leaks. I loved doing that because I could just image it in my head and I just knew how Yuki was going to sound. <laughs> but overall, I am just a huge voiceover nut, so just this entire experience is awesome. Cool. Um, as for... As for me, like, what do I enjoy most about Toru? Uh, the fact that she is a little dumb. The fact that she's a little, a little, a little airheaded. It's she's like this very pure kind of person, and that's refreshing. It's nice to find someone like that. So, um, I think one of my favorite lines that I've gotten to do so far is the part where, um, what is it? Oh, Kyo's trying to get me from work. I came home early. I think he I knew it. Was I knew it. Was <laughs> <laughs> my bag. And I just am like, oh, um, Kyo, I just hit you in the face. Oh, yeah. And she just keeps talking and talking and talking, which is, it was really funny. And I just imagine, I can just image it in my head. It's really funny. And any of the really funny lines she gets to are fun. Mm-hmm. And it's also nice because she's, there's so much to her that, like, she's this very, very complex person. Like, it's, not a character, but like a full person. Like I really feel like I'm getting to know a person with Toru. Yay, that's sweet. And I, um, I got, I got a lot of comments. I think that I got more comments about that joke than maybe any other joke. That people seem, <laughs> people seem to really like. What was it? Shigure is um, uh, something about like I'm something of a dog myself. People really love that line. But the, also the the joke where I just hit you in the face. I got so many you comments. Hit you in the face. People <laughs> fucking love that. One. <laughs> So, pardon my French. Um, <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, so, um, oh, what hopes do you have for your character in the future, or if you have been spoiled? Um, what are you, and trying to say it's spoiler-free, what, what are you most looking forward to acting out? Uh, oh, that's a good question. Um, well, without spoiling, oh, boy. Uh, be nice and vague, I guess. I'll, I'll try to be vague. Um... Uh, one of them, there's a couple. One is meeting the other characters, um, particularly some towards the end that are very cool. Um, and any uh, romantic things that happen with Toru and a certain person. Yes, we can't say who we are. Looking forward to that. That's that's going to be interesting. <laughs> okay, uh, Evan? Which you don't know what's going to happen, so haha. Haha. <laughs> uh, no, I don't. But if I, but if I were to say anything, it is just learning more about Yuki, and just trying to make him sound more emotional when an emotional point happens. Because pretty much the extent of that is the is the monologue of doom in episode four. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't. Have, it's raining. He's a ratty. I mean, else to talk about. <laughs> yeah, true. And that's pretty much it for me, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> So hopefully from this, you uh, listeners have learned a little bit about the uh, the recording process and how this is all done. Um, it can be a little bit messy, a lot of fun. And um, speaking of messy and fun, uh, get your minds out of the gutter. Speaking of messy and fun, we had um, <laughs> we had uh, we have cast readings every now and again. We need to organize another one, but um, but uh, I guess. Uh, the very first cast reading we had, sadly, Evan was not present because he had something else going on, but we tried to pack, what, 12 or 14 people in a Skype call? That we was... had, like, 20 people, Joe. <laughs> there were a lot of 20. <laughs> they were a lot, but uh, we well, I say tried because people kept falling out because it was so crowded. But um, 
But yeah, people that were actually reading for their parts and then other 